elements of access, transport planning for engineers, transport engineering for planners. Forward. Nothing in cities makes sense except in the light of accessibility. Nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution. Theodore Dobzhansky. Cities, like organisms, take on unique forms that are shaped by millions of factors, but most of those factors relate to accessibility. The locations of activities in space depends on almost entirely on the location of other activities in space and how easily they can be reached. So we adapt the famous Dobzhansky quote, nothing in cities makes sense except in the light of accessibility. Transport cannot be understood without reference to the location of activities, land use, and vice versa. To understand one requires understanding the other. However, for a variety of historical reasons, transport and land use are quite divorced in practice. Typical transport engineers only touch land use planning courses once at most, and only then if they attend graduate school. Land use planners understand transport the way everyone does, from the perspective of the traveler, not of the system, and are seldom exposed to transport aside from, at best, a loan course in graduate school. This text aims to bridge the chasm, helping engineers understand the elements of access that are associated not only with traffic, but also with human behavior and activity location, and helping planners understand the technology underlying transport engineering, the processes, equations, and logic that make up the transport half of the accessibility measure. It aims to help both communicate accessibility to the public. This book unpacks the idea of accessibility introduced in the first part, Elemental Access, into its constituent elements. We group these into the people, about human behavior, the production, about economics, and adapting the title of another book, the places, the land use, and the plexus, the network, respectively. The final part of the book, The Progress, examines the dynamic coevolution of place and plexus over time. While for pedagogical reasons we try to make these distinctions crisp before muddying them up, it is easier to go from clear thinking to a muddle than the other way. We also note there is a lot of fuzziness and interaction between the transport and the land use elements of the equation. We have designed the book as a hypertext as much as a linear narrative, so readers can drift back and forth between the two. While there are not quite an infinite number of paths through the book, there are many. We've allocated sections to chapters and chapters to parts. For the most part, these are straightforward. In some cases, they have the scent of the arbitrary bush. So be it. There are more topics that can be included but aren't. Concision is at war with completeness, and the more time we spent writing before releasing, the less likely you would be reading it now. Additional topics may be included in future editions. Most readers will want to read from beginning towards the end, and that is probably the easiest, but we encourage you to jump around. One of our reviewers suggested that you can read it from front to back if you are a planner and from back to front if you are an engineer. This is an interesting thought, but not quite where we are. We want both planners, engineers, and anyone else reading to know everything and not give up on the unfamiliar terrain. The equations have, for the most part, been confined to margin notes, which are available to read for the more engaged reader, but could be skipped or glanced at by others. The margin notes also contain footnotes, links to references, and hyperlinks to other parts of the text, as well as some illustrative figures. The space is busy, but worthy of attention when more detail is wanted. David Levinson, West Marshall, and Kay Axhausen, December 2017.